Hello back to episode 2. This time I just watched a very inspirational video from Robert Scoble. Thank you Robert, keep going, uh, you're putting out great content. Have a look at the video, it's here. Uh, it's about frictionless experience, frictionless business. He talks a lot about how the new digital way of doing business can reduce friction through through the process for especially for the customer so that the customer gets what he wants in in a faster way and i i would even say this this is something to talk about old economy and the new economy and if if i look what i experience in purchasing uh, electric motors for every cook as i told in my last video. This is every cook, intelligent cooking device. I need a very special motor to keep stirring and cutting. And by the end of last week on Friday I contacted the motor manufacturer in Germany and I, I contacted him because I saw he has brushless motors for a very reasonable price around 50 to 60 euros which, which for a brushless motor is a good price. And for every cook we absolutely want to go brushless because we think brush, brushed motors are just outdated. And I, I talked to that sales guy for quite some time and he liked the idea of every cook very much. I asked him if he knows Thermomix which is a, a big player in the market. He, he knew that and he was like yeah you are a cool startup, keep going, try to, to bring some some diversity into into that uh, automated cooking market. In the meantime, I explained him my situation. Look, we are a startup. We have no money. We have little money we are willing to spend. We are building prototypes. So we just need one motor at a time, but we need it to fit in so we can make an awesome prototype. And he said, yeah, thank you. We, I, I will have a look. I, I will talk to, to my colleagues and I will come back to you. And on Monday I got an email from his colleague with him in, in CC where he explained me that it basically could be possible but he can't make it high voltage and so then I asked him okay maybe we go to low voltage that's that's a detail but what's important to me is that I get a shaft with with a warm gear. That's, that's a warm gear shaft. So that's a warm gear shaft and what he has is just a, a classic shaft which is just straight and I asked him uh, what what exactly can you do? Uh, can you make me one motor with, with that, that special shaft? And that colleague of the guy I talked to uh, asked back what quantities are we talking about? And so here I see a lot of friction and I'm, I'm, I was actually a little pissed. I even didn't answer that manufacturer yet uh, because I was like, look, I talked to one of the guys and explained to him, hey, startup situation, so we, we can't buy you a hundred motors for something we are not even sure there's a market for. And inside the company already there was friction because that information didn't go through and his colleague goes back into that old economy thinking we need to make large quantities and especially in in prototyping in, in manufacturing I think the new economy goes more and more towards smaller quantities more individualization more customization of, of, of devices and parts and whatsoever and through digital we can do it I mean making a shaft like this is is exactly the same machine than making a shaft like this. The only thing you change is, this, is the software. So if you're not able to upload a new software onto your machine to, to just change the shaft and integrate that into your manufacturing process, I think you're just old economy. You don't have realized that we are in 2015 now and that, that others will be pushing into that direction if it's not me because I'm pushing hard. I think it's it's something we need to do as quickly as possible. More customized manufacturing not only through 3D printing. 3D printing is great 
but in many fields is just not applicable. We think CNC machining and and CNC cutting, CNC winding of coils uh, is has the same potential as 3D printing to have a seamless experience from a web interface to to a product directly with nearly no human interaction so you can quickly make a quotation to the user less friction you can quickly transfer all the data inside the company to where the piece is built also less friction and and this lowers the costs speeds up the thing and yeah so i think i'm on the right way i will keep going and yeah I mean that the current process of, of B2B sales like like it exists where you have a sales rep coming to your place or talking to you on the phone um, explaining what they could do what they can't do taking notes by hand maybe writing then an email to to someone else in the company and then not that forwards the guy this email again to someone else who has the machine to make it and then needs to get the data out of that email or out of that paper where it's written to manufacture it that's that's just old economy that's that's too that's too slow for for the pace we are living it so in the end we had friction we had friction on the uh, manufacturer side because he was trying to sell me something and couldn't close. Friction on my side, I lost at least half an hour of my time trying to, to find out if it may be possible because it was a small company in Germany. I hoped for some flexibility. I, I was really willing to give them a chance. I mean, I tried with several mono, motor manufacturers, spent all together hours on the phone or on email or on Alibaba chat also. I, I even took the plane to China to visit motor manufacturers. I, I really wanted to give a chance to all of them to sell me what I need. And what I need is a motor, one piece, to make a prototype that is physically possible to make in a reasonable size, reasonable weight, uh, reasonable voltage too. But since it was a little bit outside of their let's say comfort zone uh, at the end we, we couldn't close that deal uh, in the meantime you see computer manufacturers you configure your computer online you say what screen resolution you want what hard disk storage how much RAM what processor and they directly feed that through to their manufacturing line so it costs them nearly no overhead even even with cars you can do that with the car manufacturer I'm not so sure if they can directly feed it through to the manufacturing light or if you have some human interaction in between that someone has to copy paste that data from from one CRM system to to a product lifecycle management tool whatever it is um, in the meantime if you go to a restaurant and you order a steak and a fish the cook won't tell you, sorry, between the steak and the fish, I, I need to rearrange my kitchen. So it will take a little bit longer to, to make you that. And if you go to a tailor, that, that's why we call it tailor motor. If you go to a tailor, you're tall, you're short, you're overweight, you're slim, whatever the tailor makes you a suit. He, he won't tell you he's not able to do it because in the end, it's always the same process. It's, it's uh, cutting fabric, uh, sewing it together and and that's it he he takes the measure he, he needs and so i i really believe that the, f the future in b2b motor sales is that you have a really user-friendly motor configurator there are motor configurators out there but it's a pain to use them that the, the motor configurator is is so user unfriendly that you pick up the phone and start ca start calling the sales rep and the sales rep, I mean, if you have distribution companies in all countries, uh, the sales rep are a major cost factor you have. I mean, I, I guess it's, it's nearly half of the price of the motor that, that, that you spend in, in having a, a, sales, a, a sales team running around, driving around 
to, to meet, meet customers and, and tell them, please consider us for, for your next purchase. In the meantime, I talked to too many engineers and the engineers, they, they got used to it. I mean, they, they don't see immediately the, the potential of the idea because they think that the current process is working nicely and they accept that they have to, to build the whole machine around the motor because they, the motor is a black box, you can't change it. And they accept that if, if you need a custom motor, it will cost you a lot of money, it will cost you a lot of time. Most, most manufacturers who do customized motors, they took about months uh, for, for delivery of, of that motor. And they, they really have a person that, that takes your data that comes in some unstructured way and starts processing it uh, to, to make it uh, compatible with their manufacturing line, um, which, which is not necessary, I think. And maybe I will find a motor manufacturer, maybe I will become a motor manufacturer that's that's still open that's that's why i'm i'm doing this here to to really get a feeling of it what what are the opportunities what are what are the, the, the traps the the holes i should not step in and yeah so stay tuned for for the next few episodes where i go into more technical detail as i said um and i hope you enjoyed and thank you <laughs>